I'd like to start by apologizing to those who might be disappointed by the lack of ambiguity in this presentation. We, 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 tr we, try, to be, we try to be as clear as possible in our writing, and so I'm, I'm sorry. Um, secondly, it's also, it's really humbling to be here and discuss uh, beer. I mean, there are as many extraordinary people in this audience as there are up at this podium, and I think we could have easily, just as easily swapped places and had the same quality of program. Um, Temporary Services is a group of three people based in Chicago and Urbana, Illinois. Uh, I'm Mark Fisher. The other two members are Brett Bloom and Salem Kolodjulin. Um, creating and nurturing systems of support. Temporary Services has worked for 11 years as a group to realize exhibitions, work in unexpected contexts, and create mutually beneficial collaborations. We have published 85 booklets and books. Many of these publications provide information on our own projects and ideas. We increasingly use publications to illuminate and support the work of others. Um, we work outside of the commercial gallery system. I think this is really kind of important to state in New York City. Uh, we're self-representing and often we have to create new social and economic infrastructures for the work of ourselves and for other people. Uh, as we strive to make our practice more financially sustainable while helping to shape the discourse around experimental forms of creativity, we must invest more time, labor, and money into the promotion, purchase, and distribution of others' printed works. Our newest entry point for this is through Half Flutter Press, our publishing imprint, and web store. Uh, these slides connect our publishing work to our core values. We strive to build an art practice that makes the distinction between art and other forms of creativity irrelevant. Uh, we endlessly study the creativity of people who invent their own means of shaping their cities, uh, from uh, parking enforcement strategies, like you can see on the left, to people building temporary barri barricades, uh, all of these different ways that people try to reshape space without waiting for permission. Um, these images are from two publications uh, focusing on documentation of public phenomena. We strive to build an art practice that builds and depends upon mutually supportive relationships. Uh, here you can see the interview booklet with uh, Suzanne Gage, uh, conducted by Bonnie Fortune from our Temporary Conversation series, showing a drawing of a self-help group that's using a speculum and a mirror to do a uh, cervical exam. Um, Suzanne Gage is an extraordinary person. She's a uh, pioneer of the women's health movement who used her artistic ability as an illustrator to reimagine what medical illustration could be uh, and later became a clinician, which is her main work now. This is uh, another interview booklet focusing on Jean Tosh, uh, of Guerrilla Art Action Group. Uh, here you're seeing Guerrilla Art Action Group's bloodbath action at MoMA against the profiteering of board members in the Vietnam War. We must reach out to our predecessors who embolden us to take risks as we carry out our own guerrilla ideas. Uh, Jean is alive and well, living on Staten Island where he continues to espouse his political views much to the irritation of his neighbors. Uh, he just recently got a death threat anonymously against his cat. We strive to build an art practice that champions the work of those who are frequently excluded, under-recognized, marginal, non-commercial, experimental, and or socially and politically provocative. Um, on the left is the cover of a booklet from a 2001 exhibition that we organized in a tiny office space uh, in downtown Chicago uh, by the group, Chicago-based group Biggest Fags Ever. And on the right, Brett from Temporary Services uh, is wearing a uh, inflatable wall in San Juan in 2002, um, redirecting traffic a bit or bringing it to a halt uh, in very kind of pathetic means. We strive to build an art practice that makes opportunities from large museums and institutions more inclusive by bringing lesser known artists in through collaborations or advocacy. Uh, these are three images from an ongoing project with an artist named Angelo, who's incarcerated in a maximum security prison in California. Uh, the project is called Prisoner's Inventions. On the left and middle, you're seeing two drawings by Angelo illustrating things that he's seen other uh, past cellmates and fellow prisoners create. On the left is a uh, electrical, uh, an immersion heater made from toothbrushes and bits of metal. Uh, in the middle is a technique for using burning rolls of toilet paper to make toasted cheese sandwiches. And on the right, another part of the project is a reconstruction of Angelo's prison cell that was built by fabricators at Mass Mocha using blueprints that he drew. He measured absolutely everything in his cell. And then um, working with the technicians, they realized his drawings. They, they 
they felt that it was uh, one of the best set of plans by an artist showing how to make their work uh, that they'd ever received from anyone. Um, a really quick anecdote about this project, uh, guards actually found that photo uh, when they were searching Angelo's cell and we sent him the documentation and got really irritated and said, you know, how the hell did you get a photo of your cell? Thinking that he had somehow, you know, smuggled in a camera, taken photos, sent them out to be processed, got them back. I mean, you can imagine the, the security breach and then Angelo pointed out all the things that they did wrong at Mass Mocha, how the toilet wasn't quite to spec and uh, it, was, it was a really great, great moment. We strive to build an art practice that puts money and cultural capital back into the work of other artists and self-publishers. Uh, we do this primarily through the web store we created. Uh, we created this because we need to distribute our own work and our own book. And there was no point in doing that if we couldn't also use this as a way of helping other people. Uh, so we sometimes barter our books with other self-publishers and uh, they try to deal with moving our stuff out into the world and we care take care of their work. And we, uh, we pay people up front for their work. We don't make them wait forever for their consignment fee. And uh, really try to treat people in our practice the way we like to be treated. Lastly, we try to build an art practice that insists that artists who achieve success or renown devote more time and energy toward creating, creating supportive social and economic infrastructures for others. Uh, let's face it, you know, there are a lot of very powerful people in this room. And there are many ways that people here could be working with others in the audience, and many of you are as well, to, uh, to reach out and bring people up who don't have the same opportunities that, that I've had today. Uh, lastly, I'd like to close with a call for help, particularly from people who've traveled to the summit from other parts of the country. We're about to release a free newspaper artwork that collects writings by artists who come there contending with the financial collapse and decreasing economic support.